Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 4th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to provide for you an update coming from Copernicus, which is Europe's global climate monitoring system showing that August of 2018 was the fourth hottest on record for the entire record of, of global, global climate record keeping as taken by Copernicus. I am also going to provide for you the NASA update as well as a second confirmation. But since Copernicus is the first to report on the issue, I thought I would alert you to their report. It's worth noting that Copernicus finds that August of 2018 was more than 0 0.35 degrees Celsius warm, warmer than the average of August from 1981 to 2010, which was already a, a considerably warmer than average range. It was the fourth hottest August on record, as we noted before, and it was a, more than 0 0.2 degrees Celsius cooler than August of 2016 during the, the Super El Nino year of 2016 and about 0 0.1 degrees Celsius cooler than August, excuse me, August of 2017, and which were the first and second warmest August periods on record. Drilling a little bit deeper for the August measure, we find that most regions of the globe were warmer than normal with a, with a few notable exceptions, some near what region near West Antarctica, which was, was cooler than normal as well as a few trough zones in, in the region of Antarctica, although Antarctica as a whole was considerably warmer than normal during August. Uh, the North Atlantic cool pool remains, as well as small cool zones speckled throughout. Note that this is anomalies relative to the already warmer than normal 1981 to 2010 period. We'll get a, a better idea of, of departures from mid 20th century averages when we look at the NASA measure. It's worth noting that the Arctic for August was also quite a bit warmer than normal with Europe continuing to trend warmer than normal as well. I'd just also like to add that the, the present trend following the Super El Nino year of 2016 has been, if you're looking at 12 month anomaly averages, according to Copernicus, it's been about a, a 0 0.2 degrees Celsius dip following the, the peak of natural variability in the 2016 El Nino timeframe. And, and that's what, uh, about what we, what we would expect it's also worth noting that the peaked trough 12 month average uh, departure from, from peak to trough following the 1998 El Nino on a global level was about 2.3, possibly 2.4 degrees Celsius. It's worth noting that during the post El Nino timeframe following 2016, we have not yet experienced a an official El Nino. We've had, well, I have not yet experienced a, a strong official El Nino. We've had two weak El Ninos, according to NOAA, in the, uh, in the equatorial Pacific zone, both during the winter of 2017, 2018, and during the winter of 2016, 2017. So, so the, the drop off that we've seen is, is about within the historical range. And if we do see an El Nino, as is predicted, we would expect for, for the trends to, to begin to curve back up and to start to challenge some of the peaks during the, that occurred during the 2016 timeframe, as we saw during the years of the 2000s to 2010. It's also worth noting that the, the present period of global temperatures is without precedent in the global temperature record. 
with, with temperature departures well above the 0 0.4 degrees Celsius line uh, above the 1981 to 2010 average, which is, which is above the uh, 1C above 1880s line that, or above the, the 19th century benchmark that, that many global monitors use as an official record for keeping track of, of where we are as, as, as it, it compares to Holocene averages and, and, and as, as it compares to benchmarks that, that we could look at for how much damage we, we could expect from human-caused climate change. So, so we're well within the 1 to 1.2 degrees Celsius range above pre-industrial averages and unfortunately, as, as natural variability is expected to tip toward El Nino, we can tend to expect to see the records of 2016 challenged. Now, it's, it's not certain that, that 2016 would be overcome, uh, particularly if we saw a weak El Nino or, or a moderate El Nino. And, and that is what is, is presently being predicted by NOAA. So, so just a, a basic overview of the present update provided by Copernicus. August of 2018 was the fourth highest on record. And, and unfortunately, we are in uncharted climate territory, which is also unfortunately beginning to get into a dangerous range for human forced climate change. Thank you for joining me and I will be chatting with you soon.